I'm super honored to be here today and talk with you about the successful climate transformation that companies go through. And most importantly, how you can all be part of it. But first of all, let me tell you, I never believed that companies can be climate champions in first place. I always believed they are the problem. But things have changed, and nowadays I work as founder of the Climate Choice on a daily basis together with decision makers and companies who go all in and want to make a difference. So let me tell you how this happened and how you can become part of that journey. To start with, I have a question for you. Maybe you want to close your eyes. When was the moment you realized climate transformation is really the challenge of the 21st century? Picture it, and you can open your eyes. Maybe it was somewhere during the last years when millions of young people went to the street to demonstrate for a regenerative future, which we own them. For me, this climate aha moment was back in 2014, when I had the chance to study the IPPC report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, together with Professor Dr. Edmar Edenhofer, the nowadays co-director of the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact. Back then, it was the first time I really looked into the data, the science behind the climate crisis. And I couldn't believe what I was reading. I mean, for sure, as many of you, I already knew that the planet was in a really bad state. But I had no clue that we were rushing in such a fast pace in our self-made climate disaster. And this was the moment I realized that actually the result showed that most of the negative impacts that we have been forecasting until then for the end of the century will most likely already happen in the middle of the century. So I was shocked. Because for my personal life, that means when I'm about 40, we will have crossed the 1.5 degrees global warming limit. And when I'm celebrating my 60th birthday, we will live already in a world of two degrees global warming with all its negative impacts. So back then, that was a moment I decided to determine my professional career to bring that scientific knowledge into the business world. And that was almost 10 years ago. And it can feel like not a lot of things has been happening because emissions are still rising globally. But this is not where the story ends. There are good climate news, too. So scientists did not only show us the next Armageddon without showing any tools how to turn this climate crisis into a successful climate transformation. So let us imagine how the world could look like if we listen to science and implement the solutions. Let me take you to 2050. And Imagine how we all work on decarbonizing economy to bring a climate utopia into practice. So again, maybe imagine I'm standing in front of you on a TEDx stage in 2050, not talking to you, but the next generation. What would I ask them? Would I still ask them about their climate aha moment? Or rather, when was the moment you realized we succeeded in climate transformation? and that we are on a regenerative path to the future. So let me tell you from 2050 how the journey started. So our successful journey to climate transformation started because people listened to science. And we went through three major mindset shifts that allowed us to turn the climate crisis into a successful climate transformation. And the first mindset shift that happened was acceptance. We accepted that economy plays a major role in climate change. This is obvious because 70% of all emissions worldwide were created since the Industrial Revolution until the early 2020s by about 100 companies. But we also accepted that these companies were not alone. Did you know that about 90% of emissions sometimes even more, of a company are created in its supply chain. 
and thereby half of our global emissions are created and locked in only eight supply chains worldwide. And each of those are consisting of hundreds and thousands of suppliers. So the first thing we had to accept was if we really want to tackle climate change and bring down emissions, we have to work collaboratively together along supply chains. The second mindset shift that happened was responsibility. Until then, we often believed we couldn't have already the solutions to fight climate crisis. And we always thought there must be a new innovation so that we can solve it all at once. But then we actually realized that most of the tools are already out there at our fingertips. So the scientists from the IPPC report showed us that actually to cut emissions by 2030, which was for sure the hardest part to do, we simply had to implement the solutions that were already out there and proven. So this led directly to the third mindset shift, to actions. We didn't really had a solution problem, but an implementation issue until then. But then people actually accepted they have a role in climate change, they took responsibility, and companies implemented the solutions that had the power to reduce more than 50% of emissions with a high impact and low cost along supply chains. So looking at a single supply chain, that didn't mean that one company took actions, but actually hundreds and thousands of them. And the solutions were already out there. So together, they switched renewables. Together, they used electronic transport. Together, they went to circular processes, and together, they implemented natural solutions. So a true race to zero started, and actually companies were competing to take climate actions. Together, in 2050, this way, climate transformation was at a full bloom. So how does it sound for you? Maybe not so good. We tend to be really unsatisfied when we hear climate actions basically need a mindset shift rather than technical solutions. We really want to hear about this one solution that helps us to solve it all at once. So what do I believe we can get out of that imaginary journey and mindset shifts? Well, when we look into global emissions, we see they are created mainly by industries, and specifically by companies buying and selling products. And that is actually the beauty of it, because every single buying decision equals a climate decision. And we can now work on it to redesign these decisions and take the climate factor into it. So what does it mean for practice? In practice, this means that the devastating results of the IPPC report in 2014 did not only have a huge effect on me, but on the global community. So one year later, in 2015, we agreed in Paris to actually cut emissions until 2030 by half, which is now in the next seven years. And what governments did was working together to provide guidelines how to implement these climate targets into actions and accelerate climate solutions. And this is what they got for us. As a result of the Paris Agreement, we have come up with new climate regulations, such as the EU taxonomy, TCFD, CSRD, EU supply chain law, and that can all sound a little bit overwhelming. But what they provide for us are actionable frameworks that help companies to manage their climate performance holistically. So from today onwards, companies do not only have to show their CO2 emissions, but also their strategies, how they bring down emission, and how they're engaging their suppliers in that journey. So having all these guidelines at hand, companies can nowadays really become the climate champions of this transformation they can turn supply chains into real sources of value for people, planet, and profit. So what do we need for this? 
Normally, towards the end of a TED Talk, one would say how we can solve the whole thing by a clear set of solutions. Normally. But climate transformation is different. We have seen that working against each other doesn't bring us anywhere. We cannot go in a fight against companies and just leave it to our private life to boycotting or demonstrating on the street, which is for sure a good thing to do. But we can do much more. We are talking of the greatest transformation of the economy since the Industrial Revolution. We are talking of a climate revolution in a minimum of time, and we cannot lose any more years. So that brings me back to our shared climate aha moment. Because the climate aha moment of the business world is right now. And we are all part of it, as employees, employers, customers. So what we can do is really understanding our climate power in economy and using the three mindset shifts to succeed in climate transformation. This is what you can do. First, you can accept that your work, no matter in which industry or company, is part of climate change and is creating emissions. So your work is a climate job. Secondly, you can take responsibility and align your work to the climate international standards, manage climate performance holistically and report it. And thirdly, you can take actions and decide to turn every single business decision in a climate decision. And these decisions do not have to be complicated. The solutions are already out there. And mainly, they can be clustered in these 10 key areas. They start with changing the energy provider. They go on with using electronic transport, and they end by simply just buying from companies that are transparent about their climate impact. So this way, we can really imagine a climate transformation that succeeds in 2050, when we all drive towards cutting emissions and becoming part of that climate transformation. So, you don't have to wait anymore. You can now be aware of your climate aha moment every single time you take a buying decision and turn it into climate actions. Thank you. <laughs>